Last week, I shared a video in which I discussed all the bad news affecting real estate investment trusts. In short, the apartment as well as the self-storage property sectors are today oversupplied and as a result, REITs like Mid-America Apartment Communities and Extra Space Storage are experiencing declining rents at the moment. Then on top of that, the healthcare property sector is also still suffering lingering issues from the pandemic and as a result, some REITs like Medical Properties Trust are struggling to collect all of their rents on time. Then the industrial property sector is now also seeing a slowdown in rent growth as a result of new supply hitting the market. Mortgage rates like Arbor Realty are also facing growing loan defaults. Then inflation also seems to be a bit stickier, which may push interest rate cuts a bit further into the future. And then finally, a wave of debt refinancing could cause chaos in commercial real estate in the coming years. But you should remember that there are two sides to every coin. And while this video may have made it seem as if I was turning bearish on rates, in reality, that's really not the case. I'm simply trying to stay objective and do my best to cover the good and the bad because I recognize that it's never all sunshine and rainbows in any sectors of the market. The REIT market is particularly vast and versatile with over 1000 companies worldwide investing in over 30 countries and 20 property sectors and so naturally there's always going to be some bad news with some REIT struggling but today we turn to the good news and as you will see there are very good reasons to be optimistic about the coming years if you're a REIT investor. Hey everyone this is Yusia, run a small investor firm that specializes in REIT investing in today's video I'm going to talk to you about five pieces of good news that explain why I'm so bullish on REITs today. But before I get into it, I wanted to remind you that we are still offering a two-week free trial for my REIT newsletter, High Yield Landlord. So if you want to access my entire portfolio and trade alerts in real time, check out the first link in the description of this video. Just yesterday, we earned a large gain as it was announced that Blackstone would acquire apartment income REIT in which we invested just a month ago. And later this week or early next week, I will redeploy these proceeds into another REIT. So if you don't want to miss that out, make sure to check out High Yield Landlord. The first piece of good news is that the higher interest rates will lead to lower supply growth in most property sectors in the coming years. In my video discussing the bad news, I explained that the apartment and the self-storage sector were today oversupplied in large part because of the ultra low interest rates that followed the pandemic. This free money led to a boom in new construction activity and as this new supply now hit the market, these REITs are facing growing competition and declining rent growth. But the flip side of things is that higher interest rates have the opposite effect in that they have now put on halt most new construction activity. In fact, in the apartment sector, new construction starts have now dropped to the lowest level since the great financial crisis. What this means is that the same REITs that are today facing oversupply should enjoy a strong acceleration in their rent growth in 2025 and 2026. So higher interest rates are not necessarily bad for REITs. In fact, this could lead to faster rent growth over the long run and higher property replacement values. The second piece of good news is that while some property sectors are facing oversupply, most sectors are actually still doing really well. Just to give you a few examples, the data centers owned by Digital Realty are today enjoying double-digit rent growth as a result of the boom in AI. Then industrial properties such as those owned by Prologis are still enjoying rapid rent growth even despite the slight deceleration because their lease rates dropped deeply below market rates in the past years because rents was growing so fast and as a result now as their lease is expired they are able to bump up their rents by 30 to 50 percent in many cases. Then manufactured housing continues to do really well because it's limited in new supply since nobody wants a new manufactured housing community in their backyard and yet affordable housing is always in high demand. Senior housing is also still recovering from the pandemic and as a result is enjoying very rapid rent growth. And these are really just a few examples but farmland, timberland, cell towers, casinos, strip centers, net lease properties, even class A malls are today doing really well and enjoying rapid rent growth. And so this is really a great reminder that real estate is one of the best hedges against inflation because it's absolutely essential to the survival and the prosperity of our society. Before I go into the next section, could you please do me a huge favor and click the like button. That helps the algorithm a lot. And also subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss some of my future topics. The third piece of good news is that REIT balance sheets are today the strongest they've ever been. And as a result, the recent surge in interest rates really hasn't materially affected their business. It has had a major impact on their market sentiment. This is true, but fundamentally, most REITs are actually doing really well. They've kept growing their cash flows and even their dividends in 2022, in 2023. And they have again guided for strong growth in 2024, even despite their crashing share prices. And the reason for this is pretty simple. REITs today don't use that much debt. They learned their lesson from the great financial crisis and they've been steadily deleveraging ever since. 
As a result, REIT loan to values are today just around 35%. And, you know, private investors will commonly buy rental properties or buy their own home with an 80 or even a 90% loan to value. And they will feel very comfortable about that. But for reasons that I in your day, they will panic over 30 to 40% LTVs in the case of REITs. Then on top of these relatively low LTVs, you should also note that most of this debt has fixed interest rates. The loan terms are relatively long at seven years on average today, and the debt maturities are well staggered. And so to take an example here, let's assume that the REIT has a 35% LTV, it has a seven year average debt term, all of its debt has a fixed interest rate and has well staggered debt maturities. This would essentially mean that it will have to refinance about 5% of its capital stack every year. So the surge in interest rates will affect about 5% of its balance sheet every year. But meanwhile, the rent growth is affecting 100% of the balance sheet. And so it's then pretty easy to understand how the positive impact of inflation on rents would surpass the negative impact of rising interest rates on their debt. This explains why REITs have kept growing their dividends even as their share prices were crashing and the latest results and guidance for 2024 reaffirm this point. The fourth good news is that interest rates are very likely to be cut potentially quite substantially in the near term. There's been a lot of talks lately about if and when and by how much interest rate will be cut in the near term because the latest CPI reports have shown that inflation might be a bit stickier than what we initially thought. But the reality is that now we've had nine consecutive months of CPI X shelter below 2%. The shelter component is lagging and it's causing the headline CPI figure to be a bit above that. But if you adjust for real time shelter, the current CPI will be just around 2%. And as I noted earlier, the apartment sector is today overbuilt. And so in many markets, rents are actually even declining at the moment. So the shelter component really shouldn't increase the CPI. On the, on the opposite, it should drag it down. But because it's lagging and how it's calculating in the CPI, we are getting a bit misleading information. The Fed knows this and this explains why Powell has even said that they will not stubbornly wait for the headline figure to drop below 2% because if you look at CPI adjusted for real-time shelter, it's already around that level. Today, the Fed Watch tool, which you can all access online for free, is predicting a roughly 99% chance of the Fed easing interest rates over the next year. And the most probable outcome is that we will see a roughly 100 basis point drop in interest rates. And this is obviously very good for REITs because their valuations collapsed as a result of rising interest rates. And therefore, if we now see declining interest rates, I would expect their valuations to recover as well. And then the fifth and perhaps most important piece of good news here is that valuations today remain at historically low levels. In late 2023, Principal Asset Management, which is one of the biggest investment firms in the world, produced this chart that compared the valuations of REITs and stocks. And it showed that the valuations of REITs were at the lowest level relative to stocks since the great financial crisis. And since then, REITs have actually gotten even cheaper, relatively speaking, because stocks have recovered quite a bit, even as REITs have stagnated for the most part. And so valuations have gotten so low that a lot of REITs are now turning to buybacks to create value for shareholders. A great example of that is BSR REIT, which has aggressively been buying back its own shares because it estimates its net asset value per share to be about $18. And yet today, its share price is only $11 in the public market. Such large discounts are not unusual for REITs that are struggling, but we are here dealing with a REIT that owns mostly apartment communities in rapidly growing Texan markets, that it has a strong track record and is enjoying steady rent growth even today. And with their shares today priced at a roughly 40% discount to the net asset value, what this essentially means is that you have the opportunity to buy an equity interest in the portfolio of BSR at 60 cents on the dollar. And then you get the added benefits of diversification, professional management, liquidity, limited liability, economies of scale, and many other things on top of that. If such a deal was offered to you in the private market, you would probably jump on this opportunity because who wouldn't want to buy high quality real estate that's professionally managed at 60 cents on the dollar. But for reasons that I knew, investors are very reluctant to buying REITs because they are publicly listed. The opportunity is so big that now the major private equity players like Blackstone are acquiring REITs hand over fist. As I mentioned earlier in this video, just a few days ago, Blackstone announced that they will buy out apartment income REIT, which is a REIT that we used to own at High Yield Landlord. And this is a massive $10 billion transaction and they are paying a 25% premium to the latest share price of the REIT. 
And this is very bullish because if highly sophisticated players like Blackstone, which are famous for seeking out the best deals in real estate and now investing billions in REITs, that's a pretty strong sign that REITs are heavily discounted today. So all in all, the higher interest rate should lead to an acceleration in rent growth in the coming years. REITs have the strongest balance sheets in their history. Most property sectors keep doing really well. Interest rates should be cut quite significantly in the near term. And yet valuations remain exceptionally low. They are so low in fact that Blackstone and other private equity players are willing to pay large premium to acquire large stakes in REITs. This explains why I'm bullish on REITs and why I'm investing so heavily in this specific sector at this moment. Now, if you want to access my entire real money REIT portfolio, you can join my REIT newsletter, Higher Landlord, for a two week free trial. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. As I've noted earlier, this is a real 14 day free trial, so you won't be charged anything in the first 14 days. You can come in and see how it is. If it's not for you, you can cancel. You won't be charged anything. And then finally, once more, if you could please click the like button, that would really help me a lot to grow this channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your support and see you at my next one. Bye bye.